So it's like a Taiwanese donut, but in the churro shape. Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Sam Sam Kitchen, where I bring to you budget-friendly recipes with sustainability in mind. So today we're going to dig out more of my childhood memories. So make sure you are ready for it. So this thing called yol tiao. Yol stands for oil, and then tiao stands for stick. So it's essentially deep fry dough stick, like Taiwanese or Chinese donut, and it's a versatile element in Taiwanese breakfast scene. So pretty much like Dunkin' Donut, right? So jokes aside, it can be served wrapped in rice, wrapped in flaky pancake, can be served sweet. It's super versatile and it's just one of those things just like, it's so mysterious. Just look at this, like how does this even make? So I finally gotten around, hyped myself up and gotten into this recipe. So I made a bit of a tweak to most of the recipes that I found out there and make sure that I'm able to achieve yol tiao in the vegan forms. So this is vegan, there's no milk, there's no egg. I just want to make sure our vegan friends can enjoy this savory crispy goodness from Taiwan as well as the rest of the people out there. That's enough talking and let's get cooking. So to make yol tiao, we need a few basic ingredients, all of which you can see on the screen here. To make 6 to 8 yol tiaos, we're going to make a 60% hydration dough with 200 grams of flour. I got the recipe in ratio so that we can very easily make more or less based on what we have on hand. See the description for more details on how to calculate what you need. Now we can get these out of the way and get it all started. If you have been around, you know that we always, always cook with the scale. The wastage I'm able to avoid by being precise has well and truly paid for the cost of the scale. So first, we measure out 200 grams of self-raising flour. You can use plain flour or all-purpose flour instead. But just make sure you double the baking soda later on, if that's the case. Double it. <laughs> just double it. Just double it. Oh. Double it, give it to the next person. Got it. Next, add in 1% salt. So that is 2 grams. And then we got our water. I mentioned 60% hydration earlier. So that is 200 by 0.6. So that is 120 grams of water we need. 30 grams of neutral oil and 10 grams of baking powder, or 20 if you're using plain flour. The purpose of baking powder here is to create those micro bubbles in the dough so the bubbles expand and yol tiao puffs up when being fried. Now we have our wet and dry ingredients in, it's time to combine it all. I like to use a spatula to start with so less is stuck to my hand. But hey, you're your own boss and don't let some random dude on the internet tell you how to live your life. I mix it until no visible water and dry flour are present in the bowl. I then clean up the spatula so nothing goes to waste and get my hands in to start kneading the dough. The 60% hydration dough is a little bit soft and can be a tad sticky depending on the protein content of the flour. If that is the case, sprinkle in some flour until it's kneadable. Work the dough for a few minutes until it's formed into a rough dough ball. At this stage, the flour and water are still getting used to each other's, kind of like on their second date. <laughs> so it's safe to say that they are not yet super intertwined and it takes time. The dough won't look super smooth and that is okay. Now, we cover the dough with the mixing bowl we used earlier and leave the water and flour to do their thing. Using a bowl is way more sustainable than using plastic wraps and we can give the two some privacies they deserve. 20 minutes is all it takes. We now knead the dough until it's smooth. Once done, grab a decent sized container and we're going to let the dough rest for at least 4 hours. Not so quick. We want to divide the dough into two and turn them into dough sheets. Cut the dough in half and use a rolling pin to flatten our doughs. We want to shape the dough into rectangles, roughly the same size as the base of the container you're using. An even 1cm thickness throughout is good enough at this stage. To prevent our doughs from drying out, drizzle the bottom of the container with some neutral oil and spread it out with the dough. Make sure we coat both sides of the dough with oil. And we do the same with the other half too. Feel free to add some more to make sure all sides are oiled. Now our dough is all done, 
Put the container in the fridge and let rest for at least four hours. You can do it overnight and have them ready in the morning. So it's the next day. The doughs are very well rested. We now get them out of the container and shape them up for use. Get our rolling pin and we want to flatten the doughs by rolling them out. Given the doughs are well oiled, we shouldn't need any more flour or oil for rolling. Throughout the process, shape the dough into a rectangular shape as we go to ensure the evenness. Put the first one aside and we'll do the same for the second dough. Once done, the dough should be about 3 to 4 mm thick. Before we fry the doughs up, let them rest for 15 to 20 minutes to relax the elasticity. Cover the doughs with a damp towel. Again, we don't need to waste any plastic wraps here. 20 minutes is up, time for some portioning. We want to cut the dough across the short side, with each portion being about 1.5 to 2 cm wide. Very, very important to note that we want even numbers of portion in the end. Flour the top side of the dough lightly and spread it out evenly. Cut the dough into strips. Grab a cup or a jug with some water and a chopstick. Now, we want to draw a centre wet line across each dough strip. This will enable our yolk towels to stick together right down the middle while the flour surface expands and give us that classic yolk towel shape. If that makes no sense at all, just stay put. Next step, we want to stack every second strip on top of the first. And this is why we wanted to make sure that the dough strips are in even numbers so they all pair up. Once the doughs are stacked up, grab our chopsticks again and this time we want to press the dough down right down the middle where we applied water earlier. This will make sure the two strips stick together and not fall apart when being fried. We'll repeat the same process for the other half of the dough. First, flour the dough. Cut it into strips. Draw a water line. Stack them up and press down the middle. Okay, now the prep is all done. Load the dough up on a wooden board and we can move over to the stove. A wide base pan on medium heat and pour in some neutral oil for frying. We want the oil to be a good four to five centimeters deep so the yolk towel can float while frying. If you have a thermometer, aim for 180 degrees Celsius, or when a wooden spoon or chopstick bubbles up really, really fast as soon as you stick it in, the oil is ready to go. One other way to tell if the oil is ready without a thermometer is to cut a little section of dough and throw it in. The dough will sink to begin with, but start floating and expanding in a few seconds. If the dough starts to turn golden brown in about 10 seconds, the oil is good to go. To fry our yolk towel, Pick up our dough strip on two ends and stretch it out to the same width of the pan and gently drop it in. You should be able to do two at once without losing too much heat. You can see the yolk towel expand as soon as it hits hot oil. The little air bubbles in the dough blows it up like a balloon. Flip the yolk towel after about 10 seconds to make sure that the other side gets cooked at the same rate. Once they are golden brown like what you can see here, they are all good to come out from another angle and we'll do it again. Stretch the doughs out and watch them transform. Flip the yolk towel after about 10 seconds. Flip them a few times to encourage even cookness. You can see that the two strips of dough we stack together, expand with the middle joint by the water we applied. They are good to come out once they look like this. I like to hit it with some salt to add some extra oomph. And that is how you make yolk towel. Check out the cross section here and how the bubbles ballooned up. The cost breakdown is right on the screen. All of the yolk towels here costed us 50.68 cent to make. And each yolk towel works out to be about a cent. All right, and there we have it. We've got our yolk towel done right here. I've been wanting to make this for the longest, longest time, so Going to dive in and just let you know how it tastes like. I've also got soy milk that I made from scratch, so a bit of a savory and sweet kind of combination. You heard the crunch. There's no better way to explain than letting you experience how crunchy it was. The texture, really crispy on the outside, but on the inside, the dough is still 
quite soft and kind of just allows all these air bubbles to soak up whatever you throw these into. I'm so stoked with how these turned out. And obviously it's just a killer combination with another classic of Taiwanese breakfast, soy milk. All right, that is all I got for you today. I'm super stoked that I was able to take this opportunity to introduce you some more classics from back home from Taiwan and kind of expose more of the Taiwanese culture and share that with you guys. Thank you so much. If you found it interesting, definitely give it a go. If you like the video, give it a like. If you don't, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.